Hello, boy! Do you want a wireless Bluetooth speaker for your smartphone, tablet, or computer? No. Great, I got you one! It's the commuter speaker from Cove, who are the sponsors of today's video. Why are they sponsoring us? There's no drink in it. No, but you can put it in the drink holder of your car! I'm so thirsty. Shut up! Fine, have some water. Thank you. Oh no, it got all over the speaker, but don't worry because it's water resistant. And just listen to the sound quality with the rich subwoofer bass. You could work out to that, no problem. I want a drink! No, keep running. <laughs> Enough! I want a drink! Oh dear, did you lose the speaker? I suppose it's a good thing you can move up to 30 feet away from it and keep playing music without interruption. Don't worry, you'll find it. Just follow the music. On a full charge, the speaker can last up to eight hours. Can I have a drink now? Yes, of course you can. You can even use it as a speakerphone when you get a call. Ah! Head to the description today and get the amazing Cove commuter speaker at 65% off with my special link. You know, I enjoy Crash to Insanity, but I'm never going to forgive it for making me wait five days to play the review code I got for CTR Nitro Fueled one week before the game came out. What was it about this goddamn game, everybody? Why was the video so long? It nearly killed me! I have been so excited for this game, I can't even properly describe it. I mean, Insane Trilogy, I was sceptical about that when I first heard about it, but ultimately I came around and ended up loving the game despite how by the numbers it was for a remake. It was closer to a remastering with a few extra bells and whistles, but Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled? I've been wanting a Crash Team Racing remaster ever since the PS2, so to not only find out the bastards finally did it on PS4, but also decided to add in so much more to the point of it being a full-on remake, with customization, online play, new side mechanics for the racing, along with the remastered soundtrack and visuals? Come on, this is too much, guys! Not forgetting as well the inclusion of 18 CTR tracks, 13 Nitro Kart tracks, and a bonus PS4 track totaling up to 32 tracks, along with 7 CTR and 5 Nitro Kart Battle Arena tracks, and even nearly double the roster for characters from CTR and Nitro Kart? Nitro Fueled! Just open it up and let me stick it in- Nowadays, I don't get that excited for new game releases, but this was indeed one of them, and the more footage I saw about the game, the more hyped I got. Especially since, in my opinion, Crash's racing career as a whole has gone a little bit downhill since the original CTR. I mean, Crash Nitro Kart, it was okay, it wasn't quite what I was looking for. It didn't feel anywhere near as satisfying to play with the controls, especially. And Crash Tag Team Racing... Go away. <coughs> I can't hold on any longer. Let me just boot the game up and go straight into adventure mode. Fasten your seatbelts for a Beanox recreation. <gasps> Nostalgia overload. Oh, it's on. It's on now. Let's go. <laughs> Hang up. What's this? Activision Software License and Service Agreement. Damn it all. I can't skip it. Fine. Let's just go through every page. Finally made it. I definitely agree with all of that. Now on to the game. Oh, leave me alone. <laughs> I agree to whatever that was too. Okay then, adventure mode. Who do I pick this time? Oh lord, look at this retro PS1 skins! Take my money! Take it! Oh wait, I was given a review code for the game. Take my positive reception. I think for now I'm gonna go with Cortex, solely because he made this noise into insanity. <laughs> And then we move on to the classic first screen and get greeted by our witch doctor mask telling us what's going down. Now, if you pick a good guy and get Aku Aku, luckily he sounds just as deep and omnipotent as ever. To get a turbo boost while power sliding, wait until the smoke from your exhaust turns black. The only difference now is that he hasn't got lockjaw. Uka Uka is free. But if you pick a baddie and get given Uka Uka, get ready because somebody decided to give him a sexy jazz musician voice. You can travel around this area and practice your driving skills. I mean, I'm not complaining. And my pants aren't either. I just find it funny that we've gone from this. From deep inside my temple prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow. All the way to this. When they flash, it signifies they are open to play. Oh man, the memories. Look at this. Look at this. It's just as I remember it. Except I can tell what things are now. Honestly, I don't need to play the game. I'm just happy to sit right here. And look at Cortex's hair bouncing around like two windsocks. Sorry, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Onto the actual racing. Now, I think it's important to state right here, right now, that I'm talking about this game assuming you already know a little bit about the original Crash Team Racing on PS1. And if you're unfamiliar, then I suggest clicking on the top right of this video to go and watch my video I made about that game. It's a bit old, 
but so is your mum. Unless you head for the control options and change them, they kept the controls mostly the same. No R2 accelerate trigger shit here. Pressing the down button or down on the analog stick to reverse is a little bit odd, but easy enough to get used to. And for everything else, well, yes, they knew what wasn't broken and so didn't fix it. It controls more or less identically to before, with the only major control difference being with the turning. I don't know about you guys, but I found Nitro Fuel to be a little bit more responsive in the turning and less loose. And that was far from a problem in the original game, but drifting constantly isn't as much of a necessity as it was before to get the basic hang of the tracks, and turning tighter corners felt way more doable, especially while drifting. It's still heavy and nowhere near as quick to turn as Mario Kart though, which is what I love about CTR, don't worry. It just feels a little bit more lenient with some of the tighter 90 degree plus turns, and it's still massively challenging and engaging to get good with. Even high end speed and low level turn characters don't feel too bad to handle. And even if this isn't the case, the game as it feels to play is just as good if not better, which is the main reason I love the original so much. The raw guttural sounds of the engines dancing with the chunky vibrations of the controller, the heaviness of the carts and how they impact every surface like an atomic bomb to make boosts just that little bit more satisfying after jumping from a ramp, and not only that, but how hectic everything remains to be after 20 years despite no new power-ups. In fact, is it just me, or does this game feel even faster than the original? Not only do the AI racers give you their all, leading to way too many close calls, especially at the end of the adventure mode, with only the most skillful of driving and drifting being able to save you, but also, with the new boosting system ripped straight from Crash Nitro Car, the speeds I was able to reach on certain stages felt almost illegal. I mean, you could go fast in the original, but now, Jesus H. Crinkle. Many stages forced me to actually use the brake button to avoid flying into a wall, which again makes the driving and stages themselves that extra level of captivating. If you're unfamiliar, the new boost system is as follows. You tap R1 to jump and hold it while turning to start drifting once you land on the floor. While drifting, you can boost up to three times by tapping the L1 button when your exhaust flames go black or when the burnout meter turns red down here. But the longer you leave the burnout meter as close to the top of the gauge as possible, the bigger boost you're awarded with after three consecutive perfect boosts. Go too far and you cancel out any kind of boost whatsoever. This turns an already cool mechanic into a true risk and reward system that benefits top tier level players as well as punishes them for getting it wrong, which is brilliant for competitive play, and there are multiple visual identifiers to suit your needs for whatever level of boost you're aiming for. You can look for the black exhaust smoke or use the classic boost meter from the original game to give you a more general idea of when it's safe to boost, or use the wheels on your car that turn more and more gold the closer you get to the perfect boost along with a more detailed look at what the perfect time to boost is. Or you can use a speedometer that does absolutely nothing, but at least it shows you how good your jump boost will be based on your airtime. You can use the corner of your eye to see how far the redness of the meter in the corner is going for a more accurate chance to get a boost, or focus entirely on the race in front of you and use a more vague but still functional visual indicator on your car. Again, another risk reward system within the risk reward system, and I would argue it even brings an element of rhythm to the game that the original didn't have. I'm sure you've also noticed by now that this game is so damn beautiful. The second I saw the rain and lightning in Tiger Temple and the undersea reflections in Rue's tubes, it made me want to say out loud, CRAP THE RUSSIANS! <laughs> The original game I think looks okay, but definitely did take liberties and cuts against the graphics Crash was best known for at the time for the sake of getting the game running perfectly. A choice that I think paid off, but Nitro Fueled feels exactly like the Insane Trilogy, only with carts racing each other. It utilises the style and luscious visuals Crash is best known for even to this day, and gets away with it much more without sacrificing an inch of performance. Well, okay, kinda sorta. I had absolutely no issue with the frame rate dropping or stuttering, but I will be honest, 30 FPS instead of 60 was a little bit of a letdown especially on PS4 Pro, but after 5 minutes of playing, I barely noticed or cared, it was like magic. Almost like how the PS4 version of Insane Trilogy ran at 30, but the impeccable cartoony animations and slight use of motion blur made it barely noticeable for me when that game first released. Compared to the original, there's also way more detail and kinetic energy in the stages, with more classic crash enemies hiding in the background, more audience members cheering, more environmental effects and creatures doing their own thing on each corner of the map, and there's all the little tiny details that all add to the overall brilliance. You can see the ears and noses of certain characters bouncing against the breeze, the spoilers and bodywork of certain carts bend and bow depending on how you drive, tiny tiger's loincloth flaps, Papu Papu's belly wobbles, <laughs> but he hasn't got his butt out so the game is a 2 out of 10. Did you know these things were supposed to be turtles? Could have fooled me, I thought they were accordions. The sewer in this game is so rich and vibrant I feel like I can properly smell it, and that's the only time in history where saying that out loud is a good thing. As far as adventure mode goes, it has indeed made a comeback and has all the same challenges and little hub world to explore. I've always loved adventure mode. But if you're 
expecting anything new in it, there isn't really, aside from the fact that you can switch characters and cards whenever you want instead of being stuck with one. Yes, even with all those new Nitro Kart tracks ported in from the PS2 to here, which I will be honest is a slight downer, which essentially makes those tracks only good for multiplayer and single player grinding for in-game coins to buy new characters and skins, which is just as fun as it sounds. Okay, well, I guess you've also got the Entropy Ghost time trials for those stages so you can unlock him too. <sighs> I'm not that bothered really, it's fine. I just think that for the effort gone into the added characters and tracks from Nitro Kart, they could have been used a little bit more inclusively for single players only and give them more of a reason to be in the game for adventure progression. I mean, until I started local and online multiplayer, I totally forgot the Nitro Kart tracks were even in the game. And that's a huge shame too, because those tracks are genuinely very good and even include those exclamation mark crates so you can activate traps for other races and affect the environment. Perfect for competitive play. But this could have been translated into adventure mode and existed as another avenue to unlock more of the customization options only available in adventure mode. Don't get me wrong though, that's a little bit of a nitpick because as for the rest, it's all back and it's prettier than ever. The CTR token challenges and time crate relic races are still great fun and difficult as sin while at the same time teaching you all of the ins and outs of the tracks ready to gear you up for the online races and allow you to enjoy the immense time and effort clearly gone into the track designs from the original game. You interact and explore the tracks in a very special way in CTR to the point of the tracks being more memorable to me personally than anything in Mario Kart which just lets you breeze by everything without looking deeper into it, even when you find a specific shortcut in a stage. In CTR the shortcuts are way more subtle and require a little bit more looking around to find them. By the way, I don't hate Mario Kart whatsoever. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is one of my favourite kart races of all time, I just think that they both cater for different audiences and CTR is nowhere near as beginner friendly and as such, for me, is way more interesting to play. You better watch out for those shortcuts though, because if you aren't careful and aren't paying attention... <laughs> when it comes to the relic time trials, I managed to get all the gold relics without much issue, helped along by the fact that breaking every box in the time trials knocks off a huge 10 seconds off your final time, yet another crash platforming mechanic organically brought into the racing to make it more interesting. And as for the platinum relics? They can seriously f*** off! Now I'm somebody who has platinumed every single stage of Crash 1 to 3, including the new downloadable stages on the Insane Trilogy, only on my Switch because I could spend more time on it with it being portable. But I absolutely refuse to even attempt these, it's not happening, I'm not touching them. It's easier going after the Entropy Ghost Lap times because at least all you need to do there is focus on driving really fast, but here, you have to drive fast, boost practically every second your car is on the floor, while aiming at all the time crates that oftentimes only allow you one chance per lap to hit them, and that is much more difficult than it sounds. Too fast when jumping a ramp and you go over the boxes, too slow and you fall under them. You have to go fast to get the best time, but steering while drifting is way harder than just going into the time crates manually. But of course you get the minus 10 second bonus for hitting every box, so it's definitely worth it. And with many of the boxes, since you only have three laps to hit them, if you miss that box, you aren't getting it without ruining your time on the next lap, so just hit restart and try again. I only managed to get two platinum relics on adventure mode, two, and they were on the two final bonus stages unlocked for beating all the other optional stuff before beforehand, including all five of the Coloured Gem Tournament Cups. And with those two relics, I wasn't even trying to go after the Platinums, I was just playing safe and aimed at all the boxes hoping that I would get a gold, so I can only assume that the times for these tracks are really, really kind. On the Turbo Track stage, I even missed a box and had to turn around to hit it again, and yet still came out with a Platinum Relic. After going through any of the challenges though, you end up at the podium, and luckily, you get no more creepy bitch staring into your very being but you do get to see Engine with his eye coming out. I never knew Engine could take that eye out, and I never needed to know. A while ago I also mentioned briefly that you could get in-game coins to spend in the storefront for extra carts, costumes and characters, including all the available ones from Nitro Kart, and no, this is not microtransactions, even though it may look like it a lot, and I hope to god they don't make them microtransactions. You just race whenever you want throughout the game and you earn them, save as many as you want and then spend it on whatever you want in the store, with new special costumes and packs being thrown into a deal every 24 hours and everything you purchase rotating the unlocks you have yet to grab. I don't mind this system, mostly because of the amount of customization stuff to find is practically criminal, and also because it doesn't involve any real life money to even speed it along. It's just there if you want to use it and unlock the stuff, or not. And the fact that you're in control of what you choose to unlock and when, at least depending on what's available, makes it a little bit more bearable too. With customization you can also mix and match practically anything you want. Wheels, stickers, paint jobs, decals, characters and costumes. Oh my god, is that Ripperoo's costume from Crash 2? My god! They really went far 
far beyond anything that I was expecting for this feature, and most of the time you may want to look as ridiculous as possible, and that is indeed tempting, but sometimes it's the simplicity of some of the costumes that's enough for me to get a laugh. Aviator Crash here for some reason cracks me the hell up. I know it's the outfit he wears when he's in the plane in Crash 3, but when you take him out of the plane and put him in a car, he looks like Mr. Toad. <laughs> It's adventure mode itself a single player where you'll get the most coins without going online, or of course by replaying the stages in single race time trials in order to beat Entropy's ghost and unlock him as a racer. Small nitpick too, why is it that you have to race in the time trial at least one time first in order to unlock the chance to beat Entropy's ghost? Why can't the ghost be available to race right at the start? I mean look at this example here, I even managed to beat Entropy's time on my first go, but it didn't count because I hadn't officially unlocked the chance to race him yet, meaning I just had to do the race again to beat him which I already proved I could do perfectly fine. Why do you have to unlock the chance to race him and then beat him? It's stupid. I don't get it. Oh, that was tricky. Just got myself another CTR token. And did you see how close I was to losing the race? Check it out. We crossed the line at exactly the same time. Oh <gasps> my god! Okay. You guys know why I made Bandicoot Month June, right? It's because June is my birthday month, Crash 3 was the first video game I ever played, Crash just so happens to be one of my favourite franchises of all time, and the Insane Trilogy released in June 2017, along with this game releasing in June 2019. So you look me in the eye and explain to me right now why I not only got exactly the same time as Tiny Tiger here, but that it just so happens to be the date of my birth, 0619, June 19, and two of us crossed the line at the same time. This game was made for me. Oh. 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 <gasps> I'm Nitro Fueled too. Off to our first boss race against Ripperoo, and oh my god, he actually has an intro. Well, I mean, he had an intro in the original game, but this one is a lot better than him sitting there for a job interview. So tell me about a weakness of yours. Yeah, they went all out for the boss introductions in this game. Wasn't expecting this either. There's new visual gags, slapstick, animations. They're way more entertaining. Also, for all the bosses and extra content, I decided to race as the retro PS1 skin characters because I'm a slave to my nostalgia. The ending cutscenes are different as well, which I found to be rather enjoyable, but sometimes you get... <laughs> It's here I also noticed the sound design as a whole and how clean and fresh it all sounds. Not only does the soundtrack get the proper boost and in instrumental depth and quality it deserves to make it way more audible than the original game, but Josh Mansell, the original composer, was even brought back as the overseer for the new music. And just like the visuals, nothing was held back for the sake of restrictions of the console. Every other sound effect sounds great too though, the box breaking, the wheels of the cart skidding, splashes in water, plus I loved the echoing cart engines and character banter when in caves and tunnels. <laughs> and even loved the missile noises when they made an impact. The missiles sound chunky. Have you ever heard of a chunky missile before? Because I think CTRs just invented them. You could take a bite out of them. You could also take a bite out of the multiplayer. This was one of the standout things of the original game, four player split screen co-op. And here it's no different, but you don't need a boomerang to get it working. The game runs at 30 FPS here as well, which makes things a little better since Mario Kart multiplayer on Switch is exactly the same. But in Mario Kart, I've never been called a smack man. I'm not addicted. I don't even own a needle. The races are great fun and so are the battles. Man, the battles can get outright sadistic in local co-op environments. Last man standing, capture the flag, it's such a great time. But if you haven't got other people in your home to play with, then you may want to consider the online feature. Being able to play CTR online is the bomb, son. Again, the battles are great fun, and so are the basic races. And personally, I've never felt that confident in ever trying to get good online at any game in my life before. Not Tekken, not even Mario Kart, but this? I want to keep practicing. I love playing all the modes of this game online. As a bonus, it's also here where you'll get way more coins to spend in the pitch stop shop. Well, only sometimes. Yeah, this was something I never quite understood. The coin rewards for online play felt absolutely 100% random. I got 180 coins for coming second, and then 600 coins for coming first. But wait, next I got 72 for second, then I got 400 for first, 300 for fifth, 600 for first, 400 for first, 80 for first, 510 for third, 340 for third, 120 for first. What is going on here? I'm not sure if this is based on the time of day that you play, how long you play, what character you use, what track you race, how many people are in your lobby, what rewards are in the pit stop shop. I do not for the life of me understand what these reward amounts are all about, even after loads of people sent me a Reddit post that tried to explain it. But hey, since CTR is a much more mechanic heavy and I would argue skill based kart racer than Mario Kart at its core, you may find some of the online players will not show mercy. I got into some brutal fights online. But if you're finding yourself lagging behind a little too far, try this out. No, I'm not talking about boosting at every opportunity or saving drop items from missiles and every other basic tip. Try out this tip. Use the brake button a little more often and only tap it. Yeah, 
no joke, the amount of people I see fly into wars or fall off the stage is downright embarrassing online, and it's because they're too focused on going fast and boosting, but not staying on the track. So don't be afraid to break. Only during a turn, and only in little tiny taps, so not to slow you right down. You can turn really tight with the tap of the brake, so don't be afraid of it. And also, if you jump off of a ramp into a 90 degree turn, knowing full well you will not land into a successful drift or go into a wall, try this out. After your jump, let go of accelerate, tap brake, and do your turn mid-air. You'll do a tight mid-air turn to land where you need to, but won't miss out on the boost you get for a successful ramp jump. This technique is imperative in Cortex Castle, and I use it all the time in the Entropy Ghost Races, in the Relic Time Trials, and online. It just gives you a little bit more mid-air control along with the speed. Correct that with a bit of practice and correct use of items, and voila, you'll be able to win a race while being exploded by TNT. <laughs> or get so far ahead that you'll be hit but actually end up being thrown over the finish line. <laughs> My absolute favourite online match though was when I got myself into a lobby but then everyone decided to leave and I was stuck at the start line. All on my own. Yay. Nobody is here coming to race me. And even better, I was held prisoner here because the game wouldn't let me pause and quit the match so I was just here on my own enjoying the smell of the sewers. My poor, sweet little penguin. Okay, so to be fair to the developers of this game, Beanox, this only happened to me one time out of dozens upon dozens of completely fine, completely solid and stable online races, at least in the UK on my PS4 with my internet. I know it's different for every single person, but why couldn't I just quit when that kind of thing happened? Why did I have to force reboot? Surely that can be fixed. And while on that topic, glitches! To be fair, once again, this is not a buggy game at all. It's more polished than my head was last year. But very rarely the game likes to do this kind of thing. I... Uh, is that not enough? This turtle didn't feel like bouncing me here. This ramp in the sewers didn't allow me to cross the gap even though I'm in the jumping animation and I had a boost immediately beforehand. In fact, in the same race, I blatantly crashed into a wall here, but the game decided to sidestep me around it. Oh, the opposite happened. When I was on my last lap for a relic race in Polar Pass as well, which is already hard enough, on the very last jump before the finish line, I ended up clipping through the level. Yeah, sure, you could argue I didn't land perfectly on the track, but I don't know why I couldn't just land on the barrier instead of fall through a pin-sized hole. And even better, it happened immediately again, but this time I already drove forward on the floor. That's just picky game, I was already driving. The same thing also happened to me on the final boss against Nitrous Oxide, the hardest race in the adventure mode by far. But at this point, these are the only three times this has ever occurred for me in around 20 plus hours of playing, so it's not a big issue, just irritating. Wanna see what else isn't a big issue? I don't for the life of me know why my boost decided to attack Pinstripe here, but whatever, I'm not complaining, he deserved it. The worst glitch for me though happened right here, where I was supposed to unlock Oxide's car for beating the adventure mode 100%, and I beat it 101%, unlocked Oxide as a character, but still haven't got the ship yet. Considering he wasn't playable in the original without hacking the game, and that he has the coolest car in the game, I'm a little peeved why it didn't unlock, and I have no clue why. This is the only thing I really wanted to do since you couldn't do it in the original. Maybe it's because I didn't race Oxide immediately and decided to race him for the first time after I already found every CTR token and relic so the game didn't count my save file as a truly completed one because I never saw the un-101% ending screen for beating Oxide, but I have absolutely no idea. I've beaten him multiple times since then, I can't unlock this car, I don't know what's happened. At least I got the scrapbook though. Yeah, they even bought that back with concept art and everything, this is adorable. And the artwork, oh my god, it's beautiful. You even have to type in a cheat code on the main menu screen to unlock Penta Penguin, the only way you could race as him in the original game. Do you remember the last time you inputted a cheat code on a modern game to unlock something? So to summarise, this is my new favourite kart racer of all time. No joke. The occasional issues were a little bit annoying but could easily be patched out and were barely prominent against everything else this game does amazingly to make it stand out and make it more than just a simple remaster. The Insane Trilogy is a great remake, but there's only really a few tweaks to the experience as a whole, like saving and box breaking in Crash 1. It's mostly the same stuff and much more of a huge remaster than a full-on remake. CTR Nitro Fueled, though, isn't only the same great cut racer as before but looking prettier and with more updated saving and online battles, it does so much more than I ever 
ever could have expected. And if you follow Crash on Twitter, the content they have planned for the future literally made me shat. And until I really see it in the game, I'm not cleaning it up. It would have been great to have more reasons for the Nitro Kart tracks to have been woven into the adventure mode or unlocking system, but at the end of the day, I really can't complain. Nitro Fueled is the original game I love to pieces, but with much, much more. It was worth it for me to finish the story 101% and see that Pinstripe became a used car salesman and Polar became a chief ice cream taste tester. Aww. Although I must question, if they included all the Nitro Kart characters and such, why didn't they give other characters the spotlight that totally deserve it, like Brio? He's a classic character in two out of three of the original trilogy. Perhaps with Torna and the baby T-Rex being playable soon, they could include him as well at some point? I mean, Christ, if you're gonna include a lizard frog and a slightly smaller lizard frog, you may as well have just brought back Gorilla Monkey Anus Face. If I bump into any of you online, I can't wait to raise you. So how about a Crash Bash remake? Hello there everybody and thank you so much for watching my review of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. The outtakes will be on at the end, end, end of this video so please stay tuned because firstly I want to say again thank you for watching this video, it means a lot to me. Thank you for making Bandicoot Month possible. I'm afraid to say this is the conclusion of Bandicoot Month on the main channel. I know I said I was going to get another video out but you saw the, how big the Twin Sanity video was. I just ran out of time, I'm really sorry. So I hope you enjoyed the content while it was coming out and the stuff that was going on on the Let's Play channel as well. Hopefully that all went down well as well. Fingers crossed. Also, thank you so much to every single person on the screen right now that have supported this channel via Patreon. Wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. Thank you, thank you so much. And special, special, special thank you to the top tier Patreon supporters for this month. Basil, Cyberpunk Symphony, Dave Marshall, Crotchety Old Emu, Daniel Leon, Mitchell Reed, A.D. Thornton-Smith, Fart Rules, The Myrtle Misanthrope, Ewa Jack. Again, I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong, dude. I hope you're feeling better soon. This is someone from the Discord chat. Really hope that you're feeling okay, dude. Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Matthew O'Donnell, TARDIS Type 40, Slowpunk, Zachary Bourne, Ray Slocum, Luke Jones, Jurgen Pikoff, Joey Crew, Jezebel, The Game Shed, Nick Picker 01 on YouTube, Joshua Roberts, Chris NSF92. I'm really sorry, dude. I'd love to say your username, but I think I would get demonetized just from that alone. And Alex Van Kirk. Thank you so much, every single one of you amazing people. I'm sure you've also noticed by now that I don't know how to remember the script. What was it about this goddamn game, everybody? This game was made for me. <laughs> I look like I'm about to transform. Yeah, this is like watching a, a monkey using a fax machine. Ready? It's really zoomed in, that's okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what it's going right, for. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you hiding, you stupid animal? Cat's broken. Can I see it? What's down there? <laughs> oh, nothing. Nothing's down there. Okay. 